Hi everyone. I wanted to do a quick little follow-up on the uh, Insta360 Go video that I put up yesterday. Uh, because in that video, I just barely touched on the app and the things that you could do with the uh, clips that are captured by the little 360 Go. And so today I wanted to do go a little bit more in-depth in the app. And some of this stuff I didn't even know at the uh, time that I first recorded that. So uh, let's take a look at that. And one of the things I uh, wanted to point out was they are highlighting the uh, FPV mode, which is the five-minute recording mode by this little image up here. So they do intend for you to use this on uh, quads. And uh, that's a very interesting... Uh, well, they have pictured there. I'm not sure exactly what that is. But uh, anyway, so let's take a look at the album. And uh, I'll open up one of the, the flight I made yesterday. So it looks like it's in a one-by-one one format right now. So what I showed yesterday, first of all, is that it is very easy to change the aspect ratio from one-by-one. One, you're 16 by 9. Uh, which you can, and also notice when you change the aspect ratio, you will actually see more of the image. So if you notice at the top of the uh, screen there, when I switch it to the 9x16, uh, you'll see a lot more vertical information. So, yeah, so it's not just zooming in on it, it's actually showing you more. And then one by one is like in between th the two. So I think in the default state, let me scrub forward to when I'm flying. I think in the default state, the uh, stabilization is turned on, flow state stabilization. So that's where that's where you'll see the... Uh, it's trying to hold the horizon stable, and then you can see the quad kind of moving underneath. So that's the uh, stabilization turned on. But then there's also, you can also turn the stabilization off. But before I show you that, I want to show you a neat trick that I didn't show yesterday. And that is you can hold your finger down and actually slightly reframe the image, even to the point where you can see outside of the sensor. And when you do this, it actually creates a little keyframe, so there's a little circle down there you can see, and it will keep holding that sort of pivot point that you have placed, and you can scrub forward or back and add a different pivot point, and then when you play it back, it'll actually move the perspective between those two points. I'm not sure if you, you can see that clearly or not, but that's what's happening there, and you can even see that's the velcro strap that I use to uh, strap the camera in. So you can actually get pretty creative with that if you want to. You can go in and really uh, manipulate the uh, perspective. Well, let me just actually just let me just clear all that stuff out. So that's a neat thing you can do with this stabilization on. But then once you turn the stabilization off, you're just going to get this sort of fixed perspective. And this is now just kind of like behaving just as a normal uh, action camera. And if you were to export this, it would be 1080 by 1080 at 25 frames per second. And that is one limitation I didn't mention yesterday, and I didn't know it. Uh, is that the exported video is generally at 25 frames per second unless you're doing slow motion or hyperlapse stuff. So even at the uh, 16 by 9 it'll be 1920 by 1080 at uh, 25 frames per second. And I'll show this on screen, all the different capturing resolutions and the one it actually export as, exports as. But as you can see, you can use this, You don't, if you don't want to use the stabilization, you can use it just like a normal sort of action camera. And this, here's something I noticed though, if I switch to 16 by 9 you'll notice in this view I can't see the props. However, if I turn on the uh, stabilization, I turn it on, and now let me change the perspective a little bit so you can see some of the props. And then if I go back, now if I turn stabilization off, see now I can see some props in the view. So with this, you can kind of trick it in a way to reframe it. So if you want to see a little bit more of the props or not, you can do something like that. I don't know if that's kind of a glitch or a bug. Maybe that's something they can refine in the future. But so there it is. So there it is. You can see props in view. It's a nice, pretty wide-angle image, and if I were to export this out onto the phone, into the album, it would be at uh, 1920 by 1080 at 25 frames per second. But I think the, you know, the color looks very good and the exposure is good, so it'd be nice if it did a higher frame rate, but it doesn't, but I think this is still a really uh, a neat camera to have on little micros, and the fact that you can either have it like this, or you can turn on the stabilization and get all the uh, this sort of cool movement effects, then uh, you get the best of both worlds, I think, with this little camera. So, a great little device, a lot of fun to play with. And I just wanted to show you a little bit more of how the uh, app works. And I think what I'll do at the end of this video is just show you the uh, unstabilized footage, either 16.9 or 1 by one I'm not sure which one yet. Uh, but just put one of those at the end so you can see how it looks when it's not stabilized. And if you just want to try to use this as kind of a standard uh, action camera, because it is, I think, a little strange, but it is a convenient form factor to use for micros. It is nice and small and pretty easy to mount, I would say. So, yeah, let me leave you with that, uh, just an unstabilized flight. And uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you the next one.